Game World. I'm a professional video game designer, lifelong board game enthusiast, and the inspiration for the character Crazy Dave in Plants vs. Zombies. Today I'm going to teach you to play Deep Sea Adventure, a terrific small box game for two to six players from Japanese publisher Oink Games, designed by Jun Sasaki. It's a wonderfully lean tragedy of the commons game with a simple set of mechanics and a fascinating set of multiplayer dynamics. It plays in about 25 minutes. I recommend turning on the Klingon subtitles where I will post corrections and clarifications in the incredibly likely event that I said something wrong or ambiguous. In Deep Sea Adventure, the players take on the role of deep sea divers trying to retrieve the most valuable treasures from beneath the sea. The trick is that we all share a common air supply. So if you get too greedy, the ship will run out of air, and everyone still in the water will be forced to drop their treasures immediately and make an emergency ascent to the surface. Whoever successfully brings the most valuable treasures to the surface over the course of three dives will win the game. Setup is pretty straightforward. Start by putting the ship at the top of your table and setting the air marker on the 25 space. Then find all the triangular treasure markers with a single dot, shuffle them, and put them in a serpentine line below your ship. Do the same for the square markers with two dots. Then for the pentagon markers with three dots. And finally, for the hexagonal markers with four dots, making one long serpentine line of increasingly valuable treasures. Put the round markers next to the ship in a shared supply area, and you're ready to go. Give each player a diver meeple. The player who has most recently retrieved a treasure from the seafloor will go first. In the highly likely event that none of the players have done this, choose a start player randomly. The game takes place over the course of three dives. The starting player will take the first turn, and play proceeds clockwise around the table from there. Each player's turn has four phases. In the first phase, you'll decide whether you're going further down into the ocean, or turning upwards to return to the safety of the ship. Once you go upward, you must continue going upward for the rest of the dive. Of course, on the first turn, everyone is headed down. Second, the player must reduce the air supply by the number of treasures they are carrying. On the first turn, no one will have any treasures yet, so the air supply won't decrease. It's all fun and games until someone picks up a treasure, but then the excitement begins. Third, the player will roll two dice. In the base game, each die has two ones, two twos, and two threes. Add the die faces and then subtract the number of treasure markers you're currently carrying. On the first turn, this will of course be zero. This is how many spaces you will move up or down along the path of treasure markers. So as you pick up more treasures, you will move more slowly. It's important to note that spaces occupied by other players don't count for movement. This is a big advantage for, play, for players moving later. So for instance, if the green player was here and the blue player rolled a three, they would move one, two, three spaces, skipping over the green player space. There is an expansion die available that replaces one of the die faces with a diver marker. This gives you one point of movement for each diver going the same direction as you and this tripling face that multiplies the other regular die face by three. Using the expansion die generally lets you move further and results in a swingier game. Lastly, you have to decide what to do about the space you landed on. If it's a treasure, you may pick up the treasure, leave it face down in front of yourself, and replace it with a round marker. Don't look at the treasure yet. Do remember it will make you use more air and move more slowly because of the treasure you're carrying. So, you might not want to pick up every little piece of treasure you come across. One dots are worth zero to three points. 
two dots four to seven, three dots eight to eleven, and four dots twelve to fifteen points. If later in the round you roll the dice and land on a round spot, you can replace it with one of the face down treasures you're carrying, letting you move faster at the cost of sacrificing a treasure. If you get all the way back up to the ship, congratulations! You can now take the treasures you captured, turn them face up, and they will contribute to your score at the end of the game. You will not take any more turns or use any more air during this dive. If the air runs out while some players are still in the water, all players who have not made it back to the ship, beginning with the player who is furthest from the boat, will drop their treasures to the bottom of the ocean and make an emergency ascent, scoring zero for the ride. They should put their treasures beneath the bottom of the serpentine line in stacks of three. If a player has less than three treasures, the players that drop after them should complete their stacks of three before starting new stacks. For the rest of the game, these will count as a single treasure for purposes of using air and slowing movement. However, all of the tiles within it will score. To get ready for the next dive, remove all of the round markers from the line of sea treasures and move the other tiles up to meet them, making a shorter line reduced by all the treasures that have been brought up to the ship. You are now ready to begin your next dive, leading with the player who was farthest from the boat if they ran out of air, or if everybody made it back, beginning with the player who got to the boat last. Once you've finished all three dives, the player who brought the most total points in treasure back to the boat successfully wins the game. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please leave feedback in the comments below and subscribe if you would like to see more game teaching videos like this one. Have a great day and enjoy some great board games. It's been a pleasure. Bye-bye.